Chapter 94 to 100. Kuroto didn't deny Sarah's guess and spoke in a cold voice, yes, the deal I am talking about has a lot to do with the dragon vein. No, never. Sarah shook her head in refusal without even thinking. Ha ha ha. Kuroto chuckled at her response, he didn't ask any stupid questions like, why not, but simply stated, I am afraid you don't understand your position, you don't have any right to refuse the deal. Queen Sarah understood the threat in those words, but she wasn't afraid, instead, she tried to persuade the person, you don't understand how dangerous the power of Dragon Vein is. It's not something that you or I can control, please give up the thoughts of obtaining the Dragon Vein. However, how can Kuroto be persuaded so easily? He shook his head and said, you still haven't understood your situation, as I have said, you don't have any right to refuse. Would you rather want me to slaughter everyone here and then take you forcibly? Or how about killing you along with the rest of your tribe then raise your daughter as a puppet for the same purpose? Or I could just torture everyone here right before your very eyes unless you agree? As I stated before, you don't have a choice dragon maiden, it's either you agree or I make you agree. Sarah was horrified at every word Kuroto said, she couldn't even look straight at him, turning her head to the side she still tried to come up with some method to persuade the person in front of her. Unknowingly she clutched the dagger in her hand more tightly as if it was her support. She was about to say something, but Kuroto didn't give her the chance and interrupted midway, when I listen to the voices of the people outside living in such difficult condition like nomads, just so that they can follow you, I feel real pity for them. With a short pause, Kuroto's voice became indifferent, and here we have the queen for whom they left their city, their houses, their livelihood, but you, you have the heart to watch your people die one after another right in front of you? Such a cruel person you are, aren't you? Just to keep something to yourself that doesn't even have any value for you, you are willing to watch all your people be tortured to death right in front of you? I have to say, I haven't seen anyone greedier than you. And I can't believe you are willing to watch your daughter grow up to be nothing more than a puppet. It really makes me so sad for the child to have such an emotionless and cruel mother. Kuroto was using the best method of emotional blackmailing, coupled with the black cloak that covered all his body, and a red demonic mask gave Kuroto's words more heaviness. Sarah looked really pale upon hearing the masked man's words, slight tears started to come out of her eyes, she tried to retort his words but nothing she could say would be convincing enough. As she was thinking about what to do, a woman's voice came from outside the tent, Sarah-sama, the soup is warm enough, do you want me to bring it in for you? That voice broke Sarah out of her guilt trip, but before she could reply, her eyes fell upon the masked person, who has unknowingly taken out a kunai and seemed to be cleaning the slight dust on it with his finger and checking the fineness of the material it was made of. Without any need for Kuroto to speak anything, Sarah understood the silent warning from that action. Gulping down, she quickly said, No, I am not hungry. The woman still tried to say, But, Sarah sama your health will be dash. I said, I am not hungry right now. Sarah interrupted her mid-sentence in annoyance. Very well, please call me when you are hungry Sarah sama with a courteous greeting the woman left. Queen Sarah let out a long sigh of relief as she heard the footsteps of the woman going away. Your people really care about you, don't they? I wonder what they will think when they come to know that you would rather watch them die than make some deal with a stranger. Kuroto said wickedly. Viciously glaring at the masked person, Sarah finally sighed. Seeing this action Kuroto asked quickly, so, have you finally considered it? The queen said after a little thinking, the dragon vein has been sealed, and I can't crack it so there is no use forcing me to do it. This was her last hope, as long as the person realizes that she can't break the seal, Hopefully, he will leave her, and her people. Unfortunately for her, she has to be disappointed. You don't need to worry about the seal, all you have to do is to control the dragon vein chakra as it rushes out of control. After a pause, Kuroto continued, don't worry, I'll be paying you with a large sum of money if the ordeal completes successfully. With that money, you and your people can live a better life, compared to the dragon vein that's nothing more than a burden for your people, money is what's more important for you all. After all, you can't feed Dragon Vein to your growing daughter, can you? Listening to the masked person's words, Sarah nodded, and after gently laying her sleeping daughter on the baby cradle, she put the dagger on the table at the side. When she was done with all this, Sarah finally stated, I'll go with you, but you have to promise not to hurt my people. Sarah of course didn't believe in the rhetorical words of the masked person, the promise of paying a huge sum of money? That's just empty words. The most likely thing to happen once this person gets his hand on the dragon vein would be to kill her, after all, that's what any ninja would do. But it's not like she has any other choice. To protect her daughter and the people of Roran, even if she has to sacrifice herself, then that's what she would do. 
Besides, she is already ill and doesn't have much time to live anyway. As long as her death is meaningful for her people, then death is what she would choose. Kuroto neither nodded nor denied, directly left the convoy while carrying her, and disappeared in the night. None of the people even noticed that their queen was already missing. The Manto Oasis was not very far from the city of Roran, so after several hours of traveling, Kuroto brought Queen Sarah to the ancient city. Sarah who returned to the Roran city again, silently shed tears remembering her past and the time she spent here. This is the place where she grew up and also the home she and her people abandoned. Kuroto didn't disturb her and quietly stood on the side watching her. At this point, he can also somewhat understand her, even he would feel similar if he suddenly travels back to his previous world. After Sarah managed to recover, the two of them came to the place where Yandem sama sealed the dragon vein. Pointing at the seal on the ground, Sarah stated, the seal here was personally applied by the Yandem Hokage of Kanoha village, if you can't unlock the seal, I can't do anything about it. Kuroto ignored her words and walked silently to the center of the dragon vein seal, where the flying thunder kunai was embedded. After printing several hand signs, he shouted, Kai. With Kuroto's shout, the sealing technique imposed on the dragon vein started disappearing. Sarah muttered in shock, I. I can feel the dragon vein. What are you so surprised about? Of course, you can feel it, I have lifted off the contract seal applied by Yellow Flash, so the connection between you and the dragon vein has been restored. Kuroto explained with an indifferent expression. Tell me the situation of the dragon vein. Sarah replied after sensing for a while, I it seems it be very irritated. Kuroto glanced at Sarah thoughtfully, irritated state is it? At this point, Sarah hurriedly spoke, please, there is still time to turn back, the power of dragon vein is not something that humans can use, if the seal is lifted completely, I am afraid something bad might happen. Kuroto smiled playfully at her words, we have already reached this point, do you think I will stop? Sarah shook her head while exclaiming, you don't understand how terrifying the power of dragon vein is, it will corrupt you. Haha, <laughs> you're a real jokester, your highness, aren't you? Indeed, the power of the dragon vein might corrupt me, but so be it. Kai. With an indifferent expression, Kuroto unsealed the next seal. This time he unsealed the four symbol seal, as the core seal was lifted off the entire dragon vein chakra rushed out of the earth. Whyish? Whyish? The intense chakra pressure caused a storm in the area as the howling wind blew everything around. Looking at the purple tower of the dragon vein chakra, Kuroto laughed maniacally. The reason why he was so sure to unlock the seal applied by the Yandem sama because he didn't need to break the entire seal, just make a small hole and the rush of chakra will automatically corrode the entire seal. Stopping his laughter, Kuroto immediately brought out the core of the artificial tailed beast that he prepared and placed it at the center of the rushing chakra. As the initial eruption disappeared, the inflating purple clay appeared in Kuroto and Sarah's view. Queen Sarah looked at the inflating object on the ground and asked, what is this? Kuroto activated his Tensigen and said calmly, you don't need to bother what that is, all you need to do is to make sure that the dragon vein chakra doesn't get out of control, and help me transferring it in that purple core. By now Sarah has realized that the person she is dealing with is no ordinary ninja, the fact that he was able to break through the seal applied by Yandame Hokage of Kanoha village itself proves that, because even the entire sand village couldn't accomplish such a thing. Since she realized this, she also understood that no matter what she said, it wouldn't make any difference, so she nodded, at least she can make sure that no tragedy happens. Kuroto analyzed the dragon vein chakra with his Tensigen and noticed that it was gradually getting out of control. To be honest, Kuroto isn't very sure as to how did the dragon vein come into existence in the first place, because it is sort of impossible for the birth of such a high volume of chakra source without any good reason. The dragon vein chakra could even rival some of the higher tiers tailed beast. In Kuroto's view, such existences can only be created either by the ancestor of Chakra, Atsutsuki Kagaya, who has been sealed for millennia already, or probably her two sons, Hagoromo and Hamura. Else maybe, by some unknown evil god that unknowingly appeared in the shinobi world. In short, Dragon Vein is by no means a natural product of the shinobi world, and as a researcher, Kuroto has a deep interest in trying to figure out the possible cause for the birth of such dense chakra that can even distort time and space. Under the red demonic mask, the Tensigen was glowing with a brilliant light as Kuroto was thoroughly observing the changes in the dragon vein. Wish, wish, wish. In the whistling sound of the breaking wind, the rising storm was getting stronger by the second. The surrounding gravel was blown up and spun around the center of the altar as the eye of the rushing storm. The waking up of the sleeping dragon vein chakra shook the earth, 
spreading cracks in the ground and walls. In moments, the building started collapsing. Queen Sarah who was barely managing to stand, finally couldn't hold it and fell to the ground. In the high-speed storm winds, it was getting difficult to even keep your eyes open as she covered her face with her hands and spoke with all her strength, the dragon vein seems to be getting irritable by the second. I. I can't control it any longer. Hearing her say this, Kuroto flashed by her side protecting her from the effects of the storm, and calmly spoke, don't worry. This is just the initial rush of the chakra just like a volcanic eruption, the dragon vein will calm down gradually. Sarah who being protected by Kuroto reluctantly got up with his support, and asked with a strange expression, why aren't you scared at all? The scene before Sarah makes her think that the end of the world has come, she doesn't even know if she will be surviving this ordeal, and here this person is all too calm? She was sort of suspicious of the identity of the person with the red demonic mask. In her opinion, people who can face the dragon vein so calmly have to at least bear the name of the Akage of a village. Kuroto didn't mind the strange look he was getting. Roar. By the time the last of the ceiling symbols disintegrated, there was a breathtaking roar from the abyss. Kuroto's eyes flickered as he muttered, looks like it's about to come out. Sarah who was hiding behind Kuroto, and barely managed to stand, by tightly clutching his cloak said with difficulty under the stormy winds, I. I can. I can ALR already feel it. Ding. As soon as the flying thunder god Kanai that was used as the center point of the core seal collapsed, the altar that covered the seal flew out because of the rising pressure from the abyss. A huge amount of chakra, much larger than the towering pillar a few seconds ago spewed out from the abyss shattering the dome that covered the area, and like a chakra pillar, it rushed straight towards the sky, lighting up the entire night sky in a mysterious violet light. Kuroto was ecstatic seeing the rushing chakra. In his perception, the chakra of the dragon vein was extremely majestic and powerful, the quality of chakra was so pure that he was literally salivating in jealousy. At the same time, the magnitude of the movements caused after the complete unsealing of the dragon vein was also far beyond his expectations. Looking at the towering pillar of purple chakra, Kuroto knew that soon the sand ninjas will be rushing here to investigate the cause, therefore, he didn't have much time left. Suppressing all the speculations and doubts in his mind, he started the second last step of the artificial tailed beast plan. With his handprints, the core of purple clay gradually bulged and became bigger and bigger. Open. Instilling his own chakra into the core, Kuroto crouched on the ground. Accompanied by Kuroto's shout, a purple glow flashed across the seal spread on the core, and something akin to a mouth slowly opened from it. This. Sarah was so shocked by all this that she couldn't bring the words to understand just what was happening here. Not minding her shock, Kuroto continued printing hand signs, and finally tapped his hand on the floor as he muttered, Fuin. Instantly, a ceiling circle spread on the ground, and like a spider web, it covered all the area. This technique is the chakra ceiling method, recorded in the scroll of artificial tailed beast project handed to him by Orochimaru. Taking a deep breath, Kuroto started transferring all his chakra into the seal and shouted towards Sarah, it's now or never, suppress the dragon vein like your life depends on it. Looking at the purple core that started to swallow the pulsing dragon vein, Sarah realized what it was doing, it's devouring the chakra of the dragon vein. In the shock of the events, she fell into entanglement. The dragon vein is the symbol of the ancient city Roran. A treasure passed down from generation to generation. She was still unwilling to let the dragon vein be taken away by some unknown person. But finally remembering the people who left Roran and followed her, she finally steeled her heart. The people of Roran are its greatest treasure. With the firm expression, there was no more hesitation in her eyes. At this time Kuroto was already having some difficulty in suppressing the chakra. In just a few moments, the purple clay core has already expanded more than ten times, its huge body broke through the surrounding walls. Seeing this Kuroto shouted hurriedly, what are you staring in a daze for? Hurry up. G got it. Without any more hesitation, dropping a trickle of her blood on the seal spread, Sarah shouted, in the name of the Queen of Roran, I order the sleeping Ryumyaku, restrain your power. With Sarah's chanting, the chakra pressure of the dragon vein gradually subsided, following which the fierce howling winds also calmed down. The chakra pillar that was rising in the sky also shrank a little by little, resulting in the controllable state. Phew, it really worked. Breathing in relief, Kuroto ordered Sarah, don't let your guard down, make sure to keep the dragon vein chakra as much suppressed as possible. Sarah nodded heavily. Under her control, the dragon vein calmed down, this made the process of transferring the chakra much easier for Kuroto. 
In the blink of an eye, 20 minutes passed. Under Kuroto's urging, Purple Shell continued devouring the chakra, and soon its body was already big enough to cover the sky, its current size was probably even many times larger than that of the Kyubi. I guess, it's almost reaching the limit. Kuroto thought with a serious expression while looking at the inflated balloon-type purple clay core. The dragon vein chakra rushing out of the ground has also become very weak, as a result, the sharp wind has also stopped. With the continuous transfer, the chakra beneath the crumbling altar has almost dried up. Sarah had a melancholic expression, she could feel that her connection with the dragon vein was severed, and gradually she could no longer feel the presence of dragon vein. Roar. Accompanied by the last roar, the chakra pillar of the dragon vein faded away. As soon as the transfer was complete, Kuroto printed several hand signs and shouted, Stop! All the ceiling symbols on the now gigantic body of the inflated balloon glowed, as a result of which the balloon that had already expanded multiple times that of before started to shrink as it gradually started taking a form. Kuroto looked at the gigantic form of the artificial tailed beast as it shrunk under the restraint of seals engraved on its body with an eager smirk. But before he could be joyful for very long, his expression froze due to the unexpected change. The form of the purple clay balloon gradually started changing as the chakra inside it condensed. This was contrary to his expectations, as the form shrank, it took the appearance of a western dragon. However, that wasn't all, because the core was initially shaped into a sphere by Kuroto, and the sentient shape of the dragon vein had the form of a dragon, so a conflict between the physical and metaphysical state began. Under the pressure of the dragon vein chakra, the original sphere was forced to change, but because the core was originally spherical, the final form that came out to be was that of a chubby baby of a western dragon, in short, it was fat and cute. At first glance, it looked quite adorable. Seeing such a cute appearance, Queen Sarah gave a weird look to Kuroto. She had no idea that the big bad ninja who blackmailed and threatened her to such an extent had such an interest. Under the strange glance of Sarah, Kuroto couldn't bring himself to look at her and tried explaining with an indifferent voice, T this is actually an accident, it wasn't meant to look like this. Turning her head to the side she snorted quietly, yeah right. Sure, I believe you. Her tone clearly expressed that she didn't believe him at all. I told you this is unexpected, damn it. Kuroto stomped in frustration. Seeing the frustrated look of the big bad ninja, Sarah chuckled silently. Taking a deep breath while trying to ignore the girl, Kuroto hurriedly completed the next set of seals to seal the artificial tailed beast inside him. The cute and chubby body of the Ryumyaku was probably of the same size as the Kyubi after condensation now entered inside Kuroto's body without any resistance. This was because the self-awareness of Ryumyaku isn't that high. After all, it's only been born for a very short time, and Kuroto also applied pressure from the Tensigen, so the sealing process went without a hitch. This was just a temporary seal, as he is currently unable to borrow chakra from the artificial tailed beast. Only after completing the true Jinchuriki fusion seal will he be able to use the chakra from the Ryumyaku. It's just that he can't stay here for much longer as the sand ninja should soon be arriving, so the matter of the fusion seal can only be handled later. Finally, after checking the surroundings with the Tensigen to make sure no traces of his or Sarah's presence were left, Kuroto left the Roran city. A few hours later, by the time the morning light started to fall upon them, Kuroto had already returned to the Manto Oasis. Sarah noticed that they would soon be arriving back at the site where her people were staying and sternly asked, you promised me that you will not harm my people if I go with you. Kuroto nodded, yeah I did. I am not going to kill your people because there is no need to. Sarah's expression eased with Kuroto's assurance, then finally taking one look towards the site, she turned towards the masked person and said with all the courage she could muster, all right then, I am grateful that you are keeping your words, so there is no need to go any further. I have already seen them, as so if you are going to kill me, then K kill me now. Kuroto folded his hands and asked with doubt, why would I kill you? That wasn't part of the deal. Sarah asked with a hopeful expression, you aren't going to kill me. When did I say I would? You didn't trust my words at all, did you, Dragon Maiden? Only now Kuroto understands that Sarah never believed that he would in fact pay her once the ordeal was completed, but no matter, even if she was scared because of the incoming death, Kuroto's purpose was completed. Realizing that the masked person really had no interest in killing her, Sarah sighed in relief, but asked in doubt, but I know you stole the dragon vein, aren't you afraid I will reveal your secret? Do you know my name? No. Do you know what I actually look like? No. Do you know what are my abilities? No. Do you know anything from which you can identify me if I appear before you without this disguise? No. 
You don't know anything about me, so even if you reveal that a masked person threatened you and stole the dragon vein, what good would that do? It's not like that's going to have any impact on me, after a pause, Kuroto said coldly, besides, I know you wouldn't reveal anything about me, because you are very clear of what might happen if you go out to blabber without any thinking, after all, your people would still be alive at the time wouldn't they? And you wouldn't want your daughter to accidentally die by being eaten by some wild animal, would you? Sarah desperately shook her head while sweating. She couldn't even begin to imagine the last part of the threat. I. I promise. I swear I wouldn't reveal anything even if my life depends on it. Aren't you smart? Kuroto said with a chuckle. But I am afraid I wouldn't leave you off so easily, at the very least, you can't stay in the land of wind anymore. Said Kuroto after thinking a little. W what? B but you promised. Sarah asked with a panicked expression, but when she thought of what the sand village might do because of the sudden disappearance of the dragon vein, she also realized that the people of Roran can no longer stay in the land of wind and asked with sadness, but where else can we go? We are already living as nomads. Kuroto began to think of a suitable place. In terms of safety Kanoha and the territory of the land of fire is good, but their identity as the Roran survivors is too sensitive for Kuroto's comfort. So, once they hide in Kanoha, Sandame would immediately order an investigation. After all, the Dragon Vein was personally sealed by Kanoha's Yandame Hokage, not only was someone able to successfully unseal it, but the Dragon Vein was stolen, it would be impossible for Sandame sama to ignore this. Not to mention the Sand Spies hidden in Kanoha would send this information to Sand Village and that could lead to a potential conflict between Kanoha and Sand Village. So Kanoha and the Land of Fire is a big no no. Excluding Kanoha, Kuroto can't think of any safe place for Roran's people, they could definitely go to other smaller countries too, but safety from San Shinobi would be the biggest issue. Hmm. Hmm. Think. Think. There's got to be some place that would be safe for Roran's people. And suddenly the perfect and safest place flashed in Kuroto's mind, the Land of Rain. As the base of Akatsuki, the Land of Rain may as well be one of the most dangerous places in the world for a shinobi of any other village, but for ordinary people, it could even be considered the safest and most peaceful land. There was a reason why Pain and Cannon were treated as God and Angel in the Land of Rain. Because of Pain's strength, very few ninjas who dared to venture into the Land of Rain could escape alive. Coupled with the closed policy under Pain's rule, it is close to impossible for a ninja to sneak into the core towns of the Land of Rain. So, once Roran's survivor enters the Land of Rain, catching them would be a very difficult task for either Sand or Kanoha. And the most important point is that Nagato with the Rinnegan wouldn't care about something like Dragon Vein, as far as Kuroto knows, Nagato doesn't have that greedy nature within him, and continue to concentrate on the tailed beasts, although Kuroto can't be sure of Abito, Matt, maybe his arrogance would make him ignore such a thing. After thinking this Kuroto told Queen Sarah his thoughts and said again that he would pay her a good sum of money as the agreement. Now Sarah also believed that the person in front of her really had the intention to pay, so she asked meekly after gulping in nervousness, "So, how much are you going to pay? After considering a little, Kuroto immediately stretched out five fingers. Staring at the five fingers stretched out by the masked person, Sarah asked herself, 5,000 Rio? Well, it's quite a lot actually. Kuroto shook his head speechlessly. Sarah asked tentatively, not 5,000? Then is it 500,000 Rio? Kuroto ridiculed, it seems that you don't take Dragon Vein too seriously. Sarah couldn't resist her excitement as she asked in surprise, I is it actually 5 million Rio? Kuroto nodded casually, although 5 million isn't much, it is more than enough to improve the lives of your people, giving too much money will also attract trouble towards you, so you'll have to make do with this. In Kuroto's view, 5 million Rio is actually not much, but it would really be enough for her and her people. With this amount, she would even be able to hire a good doctor to heal her illness. After all, her age is still too young, and as long as she receives proper treatment, then recovery is still a possibility. Now that everything was decided, Kuroto told that they can't delay any longer. Otherwise, if San Ninja intercepted the convoy of Roran survivors, and Queen Sarah was threatened by them just like he threatened her, then it would be impossible for her to not reveal all the details. Although she doesn't know his true identity, she has still witnessed the whole process of the birth of the artificial tailed beast, so Kuroto doesn't want to risk it for now. After collecting his thoughts, Kuroto immediately said to Queen Sarah, time is of the essence now, go to your camp and set off towards the land of rain, Sand Village will definitely send ninjas here after checking the ruins, I will eliminate them. According to common sense, 
Sand Village should definitely send an elite team to investigate the situation at the Roran City first as soon as they notice the abnormality of the Dragon Vein. This process could take as short as half a day to as long as two days, depending upon their reaction speed and how much importance they put on the Dragon Vein. Once they discover that the Dragon Vein was stolen, the information will be sent back to the village, and the village will appoint ninjas to search for the Roran survivors. These tasks could take up to one to two more days. Therefore, the Roran survivors have up to three days for a safe breakthrough. As long as this opportunity is grasped, the Roran survivors will most likely escape Sand's chase and smoothly enter into the territory of the Land of Rain. Queen Sarah also realized the preciousness of time, so she hurriedly nodded and asked, you will be escorting us out of the Land of Wind, right? After thinking a little, Kuroto said lightly, I can't guarantee that I will be there all the way. If anything, Kuroto wants to personally escort them out of the Land of Rain in secret, but if the Yandame Kazakage personally leads a team to chase after the Roran survivors, then Kuroto can only opt to protect himself. Queen Sarah nodded silently. Although a little disappointed she was still relieved that the masked person at least doesn't have any intentions to deceive her. Queen Sarah no longer hesitated and after giving a final look to the masked person, she ran towards the oasis in the distance. While running she stopped midway and shouted after turning around, I am no longer Queen of Roran, you must call me Sarah from this moment on. And without waiting for his reply, she rushed towards the caravans. Kuroto silently stood at his pace, watching her go away. Neither did he agree nor disagreed. Not long after, the caravans of the Roran survivors that were camping at the Manto Oasis set off. Kuroto didn't immediately follow them but turned his gaze towards the sand dunes. Sand Village has arranged two ninjas to always monitor and keep track of the Roran survivors. Kuroto discovered this when he was searching for the whereabouts of the Roran survivors along with the Grass Shinobi team. So, to ensure that the Sand Village doesn't immediately discover the whereabouts of Roran survivors, he must first eliminate these two Sand Ninjas responsible for monitoring work. Byakugan Activating the Byakugan, Kuroto glanced at the distant Sand Dune and confirmed the presence of two very weak chakra reactions from one spot. Judging from their chakra levels, the two ninjas are gen in class, since the enemy's strength isn't very high, Kuroto didn't bother to personally go after them, rather he summoned the Kazakage puppet and used it to kill them. It didn't take long for the Kazakage puppet to easily get rid of the two sand ninjas in the distance. After dealing with this issue, Kuroto resealed the Kazakage puppet and chased after the caravans from a distance. While there wasn't much to do, Kuroto's mind wandered to the possible cause of the origin of the dragon vein. Although he doesn't know the possible cause of the origin of the dragon, this doesn't stop him from theorizing his guesses. As far as he thinks, the dragon vein is not a natural occurrence, or to be more precise, the dragon vein isn't completely a natural product. The best possible explanation states that the core of the dragon vein, or better yet its origin, should be a foreign existence just like Atsutsuki Kagaya, i.e., it came from outside the shinobi world. However, unlike the Atsutsuki Kagaya who came to plunder the energy of the planet, the arrival of the origin of Dragon Vein might actually be accidental, and at the same time the existence, who or which, arrived in the shinobi world accidentally, might actually be injured at the time, because of this it had no choice than to form a contractual relationship with the royal family of the ancient kingdom Roran. This might explain the contractual relationship between the two. After the contract, the existence sneaked into the depths of earth to recover itself by steadily absorbing energy from the ley lines. However, that didn't go as smoothly as one might expect, and for a certain reason that is difficult to explain, the injured existence was possibly attacked by something that resulted in its disintegration, but just before fading away, it managed to leave behind a sentience metaphysical trace, and that very trace grew over the course of the next millennia by steadily absorbing the natural energy, giving birth to the ignorant dragon vein. The dragon vein might have actually forgotten everything related to its past but because of the contractual relationship with the royal family of Roran, it was instinctively loyal to them. This also explains why the Queen of Roran can maintain an unequal contractual relationship with the Dragon Vein. Otherwise, it should be practically impossible for the royal family of Roran to control the majestic chakra of the Dragon Vein that is no inferior to a high-tier-tailed beast. And as just mentioned before, a normal human without any strength, like Sarah isn't qualified to have such an unequal relationship without the necessary strength. As for the origin of the original core Kuroto does have some guesses but let's take that for some other time. While Kuroto focused on the protection of Roran survivors, Yandame Kazakage of the Sand Village received the news that the dragon vein of the ancient city of Roran was stolen. Staring at the information in his hands, Yandame Kazakage Raza asked the two advisor elders around him with a thoughtful look, could it be Kanoha's handiwork? Chio, 
One of the elders of the Sand Village snorted coldly, who else can steal the Dragon Vein so quickly besides Kanoha? The Dragon Vein was personally sealed by Kanoha's yellow flash and it's not so easy to break that seal. Listening to Chiyo's analysis, Kazakage crushed the intelligence report in his hands with a cold look. Outside Kanoha Village. Eating a rice ball from the bento he received, Shinichi muttered grumpily, didn't I already told you to not bring me bento, I have prepared military ration pills. The girl sitting on the side responded with a calm smile, eating military ration pills all the time isn't good for your health Shinkuen. The girl is about 14 or 15 years old, with chin-length raven color hair, wearing a Chunin ninja vest with Uchiha clan crest on it. From the appearance alone it can be judged that she has decent strength. Uchiha Shinichi who was grumpily eating the rice balls brought by the girl just shook his head helplessly. After hurriedly swallowing the last piece of rice ball, he said with a serious expression, it's not safe outside the village. Don't come here again, understand? The girl frowned slightly at Shinichi's words and asked angrily, if it's not safe around here then why do you come to train here Shinkuen? Aren't there so many training grounds in the clan, why come here when you can train there? Shinichi said with a cold snort, I don't want to train with those bastards. The, those, in Uchiha Shinichi's words are the Uchiha people who mocked and laughed at him for losing to Hyuga Kuroto. In the eyes of the people of the Uchiha clan, Uchiha Shinichi who couldn't even stop Hyuga Kuroto's one move, lost the face of the Uchiha clan, so most of the people of the Uchiha clan ridicule him openly. Listening to this, the girl said with anger, I will visit Patriarch today and ask Uncle Fugaku to teach them a lesson. Shinichi felt that his self-esteem was being violated, he furiously said, Kurumi, you don't need to bother about my personal affair. The girl, Kurumi, was a little aggrieved by Shinichi's response. Snatching the bento boxes from Shinichi's hands, she said with anger, you don't want me to interfere in your personal matters? Fine, see if I care. Leaving this sentence, she walked away in anger. On a nearby tree branch, the masked was seated while dangling his legs as he observed the daily fights between Uchiha Shinichi and Uchiha Kurumi. As Uchiha Kurumi started going away, Zetsu's body rose from the tree trunk and said in a comical voice, I have arranged everything as you asked. Let's start then. Masked man said coldly while looking towards Uchiha Kurumi going away. Zetsu also looked towards her while asking in a doubtful tone, will this method really be effective? The masked man glanced coldly, what do you think? Zetsu said with a smile, perhaps. After packing the bento box in the camping basket, Kurumi ignored Shinichi and walked towards the direction of the village. Shinichi wanted to say, be careful on the way back, but he couldn't bring himself to be the first one to apologize, so lowering his head he sighed heavily. On the other hand, after leaving the training area, Kurumi was sulking while wondering how to complain to Patriarch and let him teach a lesson to those people for bullying Shinkuen. Stupid Shinkuen. Muttered Kurumi with a pout. Halt. At this moment Kurumi suddenly stopped and the basket in her hand also fell to the ground with a soft noise. No matter how much she tried Kurumi couldn't even move a single step. As a Kunoichi of the Uchiha clan, Kurumi naturally realized that she had been attacked by some sort of technique, her first thought was, could it be Nara's shadow imitation technique, but looking around there was no shadow that restrained her, so obviously that idea was immediately discarded. Then the thought clicked that her position was still not very far away from Shinkuen, she tried to shout for help but even if she opened her mouth, no sound came out of it. How is that possible? Now Kurumi was a little panicked. However, without waiting for her to calm down, she felt something attached to her body and suddenly she lost control over her body. Now all she could do was watch as her body moved under someone's control and no matter how she resisted, it didn't have any effect. On a nearby tree. The root ninja responsible for monitoring Uchiha Shinichi also noticed the abnormality of Uchiha Kurumi, while frowning a little he muttered in confusion, what's wrong with her? Before he could clearly deduce what might be happening to her, the stagnated Kurumi suddenly moved and rushed towards him at an astonishing speed. Because of the mysterious disappearance of the previous root ninja responsible for monitoring Uchiha Shinichi, this one was extremely vigilant of the other party, so even if Uchiha Kurumi acted a little strange and rushed towards him, he didn't panic much and directly took out a kunai to meet the incoming strike. While blocking her attack he asked her sternly, what are you doing girl? Do you want to betray Kanoha? However, he received no reply from her. Although there was clear panic in Kurumi's eyes, this didn't stop her from carrying out swift and clean attacks. Without even the passage of a moment, more than a dozen shuriken were already shot towards the root ninja, cutting off all of his escape routes. Ding. 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 After blocking the shuriken attacks from the girl, his doubts intensified. 
As a shinobi of darkness, he has heard of all types of weird jutsu under Danzo-sama's teaching, so the moment he noticed the panic in the girl's eyes, he understood that the matter isn't as simple as it may seem. While continuing to dodge and block her attacks, the root ninja asked authoritatively, what's wrong with your state? Kurumi wanted to speak, she tried hard to shout, to answer, to tell him that she was being controlled, that her body wasn't responding to her, but no matter how much she tried, no sound came out, she could only carry out attacks like a puppet. In desperation, tears started to stream out of her eyes. She didn't want this. What wrong did she do to go through this? With no hope whatsoever left she could not even think of a way out of this. Seeing the tears coming off of the girl's eyes, the root ninja was now sure that she is being controlled, so to avoid causing any unnecessary damage, he decided to move away from her for now. After all, the scene before him is definitely being played under someone's directive, which means there are definitely more enemies hidden somewhere and they are using the girl to meet some purpose that he doesn't understand for now but that doesn't mean he is going to play as per their script. So, avoiding will be the best option or lead her towards that Uchiha kid, maybe he could help her calm down. But just as the root ninja was about to flicker away, he found that his body wouldn't budge, even after applying all his strength, the root ninja couldn't move an inch. This. As soon as he realized that his body was out of his control, his heart went into a frenzy. Now he realized just what was happening to Uchiha Kurumi. But even if he realized, it was too late already. Uchiha Kurumi's body rushed towards him in straight, and the kunai that he was tightly holding in his right hand was raised even after the resistance he tried to put in slammed into her chest. Puff. Blood spurted out of her chest and mouth as the kunai pierced her chest. Uchiha Shinichi who rushed over to this place upon hearing the noise of the metal collision froze for a second as soon as he saw this scene. His mind went blank at the scene of Kurumi being pierced. In panic and anger, Shinichi roared angrily, what the hell did you do to her? However, the root ninja couldn't take care of the Uchiha's brat, he was more panicked than he ever was in his life as a shinobi, because the moment his kunai pierced the girl's chest, he found out that he has regained control over his body. Realizing just what has happened, his heart shuddered, he understood that they were all acting in the palms of some third party who might just be having the time of his life as he slash she watched them all kill each other. Uchiha Shinichi's look clearly dictates that he wouldn't listen to any explanation, after all, why would he? The kid literally saw the girl being pierced through the chest by him. So, without bothering to even try, the root ninja rushed towards the village with everything that he had. Uchiha Shinichi stumbled towards Uchiha Kurumi's body, hugging her he shouted in desperation as he ran towards the village while carrying her, Kurumi, why you are going to be okay. I swear, just stay with me, you here. We will rush to the Kanoha hospital immediately and they are going to treat you, it will take some time, but you are going to recover, just stay with me. Kurumi was already dying, even the last bit of her consciousness was about to fade away, but feeling the sensation of warm tears on her cheek, she mustered the last bit of the strength and stretched her hand to wipe the tears on Shinichi's cheek as she weakly murmured, Shinkuen, B, C, R, E, F, U, L, T, H. However, before she could finish, the last of her breath disappeared and her hand fell lifelessly. Shinichi who was running towards the village with all his strength stopped midway. No. 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 Kurumi. 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 It's not good to joke around like this, please wake up Kurumi. I am sorry. I promise I wouldn't ever shun you, please just wake up. Kurumi. A at least complete the sentence, damn it. However, no matter how much Shinichi shouted, nothing worked, the girl in his arms was already gone. Kneeling to the ground Shinichi cried hoarsely. His mind was completely blank as he couldn't think of anything at the moment. There were only memories of the time he spent with Kurumi that continued to flash before him. He didn't even notice that the three Tomo in his Sharingan were spinning rapidly as they started to join together. On the tree. Zetsu asked curiously, looks like they are going to change. By the way, how did you know that he is qualified? His strength is obviously not the best in the Uchiha clan, right? After pondering a little masked man replied, opening Manjikyu has nothing to do with the strength. It depends upon innocence, of course, it doesn't matter whether a person is simplistic or complicated, good or evil, the more innocent and purer one's emotion, the greater the probability of them opening the Manjikyu. Fortunately, Shursui agreed to cover for my absence for 20 days. Thought Kuroto as he continued to watch the surroundings. Just then an eagle cry sounded from a distance. Kuroto paused and turned over towards the direction of the sound and saw an eagle hovering in the sky. From its flight path, it seemed to be searching for something. 
Obviously, this eagle is no ordinary bird, but a trained summoned beast. Watching the eagle from the distance, Kuroto's lips curled into a smirk under the mask as he muttered, as expected of one of the great shinobi village, Sand Village's reaction speed isn't any slow either, already discovered our tracks. Shaking his head helplessly, he didn't do any unnecessary actions and just stood quietly on his spot, seemed to be waiting for someone. Without much delay, a figure appeared in front of Kuroto and knelt on one knee respectfully, and spoke with a mechanical tone, Kuroto-sama, a four-men team of Sand Village is chasing. This person is none other than the Sandame Kazakage puppet. Over the past few days, since he was following behind the Roran survivors, Kuroto took advantage of that time to temporarily complete a fusion seal with the Ryumyaku, as such he became the Ryumyaku's Jinchuriki. Since then, Kuroto has deeply realized that the Ryumyaku chakra is vastly different from the ordinary. Firstly, since the chakra of the Ryumyaku contains a large proportion of the energy from the ley lines, which is pure natural energy, therefore its density is significantly higher, which is not something easy to use by ordinary shinobi. Because of this Kuroto can't directly use the Ryumyaku chakra to fuse it with the Tensigen, so whenever he wants to use the Ryumyaku chakra, he has to first refine it to avoid the corrosion of natural energy. And it takes some time to refine the Ryumyaku chakra into Tensigen chakra. Secondly, Kuroto discovered that the Ryumyaku has an instinctive self-healing ability, it was probably because the intention of the first generation origin was to heal itself, therefore without even a need for medical treatment Kuroto's wounds will now heal much faster. Finally, since Ryumyaku has no resentment towards the humans, like that of the nine-tailed beasts, and because of its weak sentience, taming it is much easier, especially for Kuroto with the Tensigen. After refining a large amount of Tensigen chakra, the first thing he did was to infuse it into the Kazakage puppet. Kuroto wanted to try and see if using a large amount of chakra can somehow improve the self-consciousness of the puppet. Although the soul of the original Kazakage didn't appear much to Kuroto's disappointment, the autonomy of the puppet still improved, as a sense of self, started to develop in it. And not long after, the puppet even became capable of speech which came as an unexpected surprise. Kuroto has already completely studied the Kazakage puppet when he obtained it, and back then he noticed that the voice box in it has been removed by Sasori, therefore Kuroto was much surprised because of the speech ability. In curiosity, he obviously checked what could be the cause of it. So, observing it carefully with the Tensigen, he discovered that the Kazakage puppet used the chakra to stimulate the shape of the voice box that gave the puppet speech ability, but because of missing the original organ, the tone of voice is still mechanical. If it was previously, Kuroto would obviously not allow such waste of chakra, but now that he has Ryumyaku as an artificial tailed beast, he isn't that much troubled with a little waste of chakra for convenience's sake. A four-man team Understanding that it was just a four-man team behind him, Kuroto pondered a little and finally decided to deal with the trouble himself. After all, it will still take around five to six days for the convoy of Roran survivors to enter the territory of Rain. If their traces are exposed then it would bring an endless number of sand ninja here which is something Kuroto isn't interested in dealing with. Making up his mind, Kuroto ordered the Kazakage puppet, you'll follow the convoy from a distance. Yes. Kazakage puppet responded with a courteous nod and disappeared with a body flicker. Tensigen. With Kazakage's disappearance, Kuroto activated his Tensigen to confirm the position of the four-man team of the Sand Ninjas, as soon as he found their exact position, Kuroto also disappeared with a body flicker and rushed towards them. In just a few breaths, he was already standing in front of the coming four-man team of Sand Ninjas. As soon as the Ninjas of Sand Village saw a person appear in front of them, they didn't talk any nonsense and immediately scattered around and fired a signal. The person standing in front of them was covering his body with a pure black cloak and a red demonic mask on the face, clearly highlighting the term, suspicious, no matter where you look. Kuroto also didn't stop their action and let them send a signal to notify other search parties. Kuroto can guess that the Sand Village is definitely going to carry out a comprehensive search of different regions, if he kills this four-man team, then he would literally be notifying them that there is some problem in this direction. So, his aim is not to kill them but disrupt Sand's search operation by confusing them, which would delay them as much as possible. Not making them wait much longer another four-man team soon rushed over. The leader of the team who was a Chunin guarded himself with a defensive stance and asked sternly, Who are you? Why are you here in the middle of nowhere? Kuroto noticed that the attention of all the Sand ninjas presents around fell upon him, so tilting his head sideways he laughed comically, He he he. Me. I am Oni Man. As for why I am here. The last part of the sentence was said in an intimidating voice to increase the hype. Waiting for Kuroto to complete the sentence, traces of sweat started to flow out of the ninja's present. 
I am here because. I am here to. Just speak already would you, shouted the Chunin in frustration. Alright, alright, don't get angry ninja-san it's not good for your health, ha ha ha. Kuroto. That's it, I am done least. Wait wait, you can't kill me don't kill me, at least, at least, before I die, let me at least speak my last words before I die. Fine. Just get on with it already. I am here. Wish. Phew, that was dangerous. Kuroto said as he wiped the fake sweat on the top of his mask. That was the last chance, next time instead of one shuriken, dozen will come, you hear. Hi hi, so as I was saying until leader San interrupted me midway, which is not a very good thing, interrupting others midway could, cough cough. Alright, alright. I get it, so I was here just to, play catch with you people, Kuroto stated the last part in one breath and immediately ran away and disappeared in the sand dunes in the blink of an eye. The eyes of everyone were like buttons because of the unexpected action, all this hype just for this. The person was obviously dressed as a suspicious person, not to mention his current actions actually ticked off the Chunin leader so he naturally wouldn't let go of him so easily. As a result, the scene became with Kuroto running in front and a large group of sand ninjas chasing behind, while shouting constant insults at him, and this number kept on increasing. While teasing them occasionally, Kuroto smiled secretly. Kuroto's intentions are obvious, to disrupt the movements of the personnel involved in the search. And that's just exactly what he has done. Although he understands that some sensible ones would have noticed what he is doing but because they are ticked off, complimenting with his suspicious identity, doesn't allow them to let him escape. For the next few hours, Kuruto and San Ninja played a game of catch, the number of chasers became as much as 40 San Ninjas, Kuroto was very happy with this, the more the people chasing him, the more their search directions collapses. Assuming that the one four-man team is in charge of one region, by now I have disrupted about 10 regions. Thought Kuroto while analyzing the results as he observed the chasing ninjas behind him. By now the search of 10 regions has already been disrupted, and become a mess, even if Sand wants to sort it out again, it will take time, not to mention they will have to start from scratch. With his purpose achieved, Kuroto suddenly came to halt, following which all the 40 ninjas also came to a sudden halt, while everyone was catching their breaths, Kuroto spoke while raising his hand, alright everyone, it was fun playing catch with you all, let's play this game some other time again, until then goodbye. After a courteous bow he immediately used the body flicker technique adding the effect of rain will interaction, his body turned into an afterimage and disappeared in the sand. Looking at the figure that disappeared, everyone's eyes were like saucers and by the time no trace of his presence was left, mayhem broke out. Where did he go all of a sudden? How come disappeared in the blink of an eye? I saw him, he suddenly accelerated and fly away. What nonsense are you talking about, how could he fly? Aw oh man, I was starting to enjoy this game of catch. I know right. Can we please eat now? I am hungry. The sand ninja who suddenly lost their target became a mess. These sand ninjas are mostly genin class and a few chunin rank. It is very easy for them to catch the Roran survivors who are just ordinary civilians, but it's a dream to catch Kuroto. On the other side, Kuroto who just left behind the dumbfounded sand ninjas was galloping on the desert alone. Before he obtained the Ryumyaku, Kuroto always needed to be mindful of his chakra consumptions, so playing such a game of catch was never possible for him as it causes severe chakra loss, but now he can be a little unscrupulous. After a while of running, he stopped and gasped for breath. Although playing with the sand ninjas was fun, Kuroto still can't be messy, after all, continuous use of the body flicker technique is also not very easy, so his body was a little overwhelmed. Heh, seems like I still can't be so careless muttered Kuroto helplessly. After a short rest, Kuroto sensed the position of the Kazakage puppet, then went towards it making a big circle around. Three and a half days passed quickly. These days, the Roran survivors didn't stop at all and continued their travels for 24 hours a day, because of continuously rushing they managed to walk out of the deserts of the Land of Wind. Now the land was hard and dry, therefore it was relatively easy to walk around in these areas. Spreading a map on the ground, Kuroto muttered to himself, as long as they cross the dried lands, they will successfully cross the border and enter into the territory of the Land of Rain. After escorting the caravans into the Land of Rain, Kuroto would no longer care about them. At this point, he has already done everything he could for them. As for how Sarah and the rest of the Roran survivors live their lives in the Land of Rain, Kuroto neither has the ability nor any interest to intervene. While he was thinking, Kazakage Puppet who is in charge of the investigation came back with his report, the San Ninja have caught up. 
listening to Kazakage's, Kuroto glanced in that direction coldly. His previous plans successfully disrupted Sand Village's entire search operation, but as time passed, and based on the intelligence reports they must have gathered in the past few days, the high level of the Sand Village must have realized that the Roran survivors are trying to escape into the territory of the Land of Rain. Therefore, Sand Ninjas rushed in this direction and caught up with them. Looking at the Sand Ninjas that kept getting closer and closer, Kuroto muttered calmly, since you all have a death wish, then I might as well help you all with it. Initially, Kuroto had no interest in killing these sand ninjas, not only would their death be meaningless but he would also be giving away intelligence of his abilities, but at this point, Sand Village has basically locked the position of the escape route Roran survivors are taking, so simply disturbing their search directions would be useless, therefore Kuroto has no choice but to kill them here. If you like this content, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you later, bye-bye.